All right. Um, and this week we're going to talk about, you know, one of the the mainstays of uh, dialectical behavioral therapy, and that's emo- emotional re- regulation skills. Blah, blah, blah. Excuse me. Emotion regulation skills. And uh, it's page 46 in the manual, so if you want to follow along. Obviously, this is um, controlling our emotions or keeping them in check is what's going to help us improve our behaviors and not get ourselves into situations that we wish we weren't in or saying things we wish we didn't say and improving our self-respect and things like that. Um, The issue here is that we are really highly sensitive people and we notice things in our lives more intensely. And I think I've said this before, 15% of the population is thought to be born with high sensitivity and things that don't bother people who aren't sensitive uh, will bother us, whether it's loud noises, um, somebody uh, responds to us in a curt manner, we really feel that. If somebody is rude to us or doesn't talk to us, um, if let's say even if you let somebody in front of you in traffic, you know, if you slow down and wave somebody in front of you and they don't even notice that you exist or acknowledge that you did a kind thing for them, we can be very, very sensitive about that, and it can bother us for a while. Oh, that person didn't even, I was nice to them, and they didn't even recognize it or say thank you or wave or do anything. And we can really be be affected by these types of everyday things. So it's really, really important to keep our balance in that and take care of ourselves. And so learning the skills and being aware of our sensitivity and our emotions is what's going to help us quiet our body, which is, you know, leads to high high emotion leads to high stress and all the things that go with it and lowering our immune system. And, you know, over time, it's very damaging to your body. So um, we've been talking a lot about mind-body skills, and I want everyone to continue to use those, being aware of what's going on in our body so it can... We can question what we're thinking because that's what's causing our emotions. And so we want to quiet our behaviors and um, so that we can make better choices or at least choose to do nothing in the moment. If we're in high emotion and we make choices, they're usually not good for us. They're usually damaging choices uh, that we are trying to relieve ourselves in a moment of high emotion. So we might just yell at somebody or beep at somebody or or um, make an impulsive decision to do something that isn't good for us just because we want to feel better right in the moment and we're in high emotion. So we want to be, if you're in a state of high emotion, always remember the first choice is to get regulated. That's the only choice you need to make right now. Oh, you know, I've got to have this done by 4 o'clock and it's not going to be done and everyone's going to be mad at me and we're all the way up in this. Okay, what can I do right now? Let's bring ourselves back down. Let's breathe. Let's be mindful. Let's distract for a moment and let's self-soothe. You know, hey, whatever happens, it's going to be fine. I'm doing the best I can. Self-validate. Get ourselves in the into normal emotion. So if you say, is there a choice to make when I'm having high emotion? That's the choice to make. That's the number one choice to make. So, um, because when we're in 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 an intense emotion, everything intuitive, creative, and good and and even keeled thinking is blocked. It's not there. So you know, how can we think of a great solution to something when your uh, mind is swirling around? It just doesn't work. And you want to be more effective in meeting goals. And when you're high emotion or high arousal, I like to say now, um, you're going away from it. And being uh, being in high emotion mind, it, it's very time consuming. I have wasted so much time being mad about something, and what, uh, you know, I'll sit and. Um, find myself really consumed about something that's bothering me. And I I don't know how many times I've had something come up that upset me, uh, maybe an email from somebody that really bothered me, and I would spend, gosh, half an afternoon constructing a response because of my 
hurt and anger, angry feelings. Um, I got an email one time from a woman who worked for my husband uh, talking about uh, having seen my daughter and some sort of behavior, and I thought this woman was really sticking her nose in where it didn't belong. And this was a, quite a while back. And I spent half my afternoon constructing this, you know, r- you know, email that just told her how wrong she was and how it was none of her business and how dare her. And I did nothing but waste my afternoon and then make the situation worse on top of it. So, you know, what I might have done is say, well, she's welcome to her opinion and she has no validity in my life. <laughs> so, And moving along, moving along. So we do waste a lot of valuable time because a lot of us struggle with time management. And part of the reason is when we're high emotion, we waste time in it. We we try to solve the issues in high emotion and we marinate in it. Very time wasting. So um, you want to improve your self-respect. And of course, making calm choices does improve your self-respect. So number one rule. No decision making in high emotion mind, okay? You know, unless you are in the woods and a 800 pound black bear is walking towards you, the decision to run is probably a good one. You know, <laughs> that's fight or flight. That's what's good for us. And also, we want to understand something too. We want to embrace our sensitivity. We are in a world that's always admiring the people who can just deal with stuff and suck it up and stiff upper lip and um, not get affected by things. And so we, I think through, through the media, through how we grow up, don't be such a baby, you bruise like a grape, we're told that our high sensitivity is wrong and we shouldn't be that way. And that is really has been damaging for us. So we need to turn that on its ear and say, wait a minute, that's like saying you're wrong to have blue eyes or brown eyes or you're wrong to have dark skin. or uh, you're, you're, It's innately in you. And if it's cherished and loved, it will, it will help propel you forward. If you're trying to hide your high sensitivity, I don't want to be sensitive. You're so sensitive. Yes, isn't that wonderful? You know why? Because it makes me able to see and feel things before other people can. It helps me be an amazing friend. It makes me a better coach. It, you know, it helps. We we can we can show kindnesses and gestures that help change people. I mean, we're amazing and the world needs more of us. If we can keep our high emotions down and learn to manage them, all that other stuff is fantastic and we need to start with ourselves. And and when somebody tells us we're overly sensitive, just say, no, I'm perfectly sensitive for who I am. And embrace your sensitivity because there's so many positive things about it. And, of course, as we know, we need the healthy perspective on emotions means we know that they're not good or bad. And we're always having people tell us it's not right for you to feel the way you do. Okay, so we need to be our own best friends. And if we've got someone around us saying, oh, your feeling is wrong, that's my feeling and I have every right to it. And I honor my feeling because it's who I am. So try not to judge our own emotions. Just say, oh, I'm having this emotion. And know that when it's negative, it doesn't last forever. We've all had times. I've had times when I've been in the absolute dark gutter of life, and I try to remember, oh, I've been here before, and I've been happy after again. And even that thought will help start to bring us out. You know, what am I thinking about? And use the skills to come out. So just know that you're not... um, going to stay there. You're always going to come back out. Um, And when you have these strong negative emotions, it's not the same thing as as acting on them. It is the acting on them. It is, you know, deciding to go have five drinks (laughs) and drive home or to feel better or to go roaring off down the road or screaming and yelling at people. When you're acting on the urge, that's when the problem. But having the emotions is fine. It's when we get skilled enough to notice them and then go back to what am I thinking. Also, emotions are not facts. The stronger we feel something, the more true it seems to us. And 
I got a call from my daughter the other day, who's a highly sensitive person. She's a musician. I was just um, sharing with you. And the guitar player in her band, he's like a member of our family, used to date my other daughter. Um, And she asked him to do her a favor on the way to the school where they were going to rehearse. And he just said no. He didn't want to do it. It was out of, you know, he didn't know the area very well. And it meant that she had to get on the freeway on a Friday afternoon, drive 20 minutes one way, and then drive back. And she was very hurt that he didn't help her. And she calls me up, and he's such a jerk, and um, he doesn't care about her. He just cares about himself, and on and on and on. And so when she called me later and said, should I have him come play the gig tonight? I, I said, what feels better? Well, I need him there. I said, do it. And so when they met, he didn't even know she was mad. He had no idea that he had hurt her. He just was answering honestly. He didn't know where the store was. He didn't know what to do. And she spent a good solid 30 minutes upset and venting about how he didn't care about her. (laughs) So, you know, there you go. There's um, The truth was that she felt like he didn't give a darn, and really solidly. So it was the truth to her. And as it turns out, he just didn't really realize how much it meant to her and that he had really hurt her. So um, try, trying to get rid of them is the wrong thing to do. What you resist persists. So just kind of be able to accept in the moment when you're feeling really bad about something, oh, I'm feeling really bad right now. I accept that's how it is. And don't judge yourself or, oh, here I go again. I've been working so hard and here I go again. And Don't go there. Say, oh, I'm feeling this emotion. Acknowledge it. Honor it. Embrace your sensitivity. And then you can start doing the work of of being aware of what your thoughts are and challenging them. So that's really good work to do. 